We're here at the Undergraduate Scholars Forum, and we're going to see what research IEP students are working on. Let's go check it out. We're here with David, and he's going to tell us about his project. All right, so my project was working with the Indiana Community Garden and trying to help build a better sense of community and also uh, work on food justice issues. So what we were doing was trying to get more people to come out to the garden and help grow locally grown food for us, like organic food, cucumbers, carrots, tomatoes, anything like that. What was your favorite part of the project? My favorite part of the project had to be when we worked at the Seed Saving event because it gave people a chance to come out and learn how to grow their own produce. And also, if they didn't bring the seed to swap, we sent them home with a pack of seeds and we gave a presentation on how to manage your local garden. So it gave people a chance just to actually know how to grow their food and upkeep a garden and so that one day they can actually grow these vegetables and you know they won't have to buy them from any other corporation they can just eat from their own gardens. I did my research on um, low carbohydrate flours and pancakes and basically what I was interested in was people with epilepsy often experience seizures and um, one way to reduce seizures is through a diet called the ketogenic diet which is a high fat low carbohydrate diet three to one ratio. So a common food with carbs in it is pancakes. So I was interested in finding out how low carbohydrate flours would affect pancakes. So I used three low carb variables. One was coconut flour, one was flaxseed meal, and one was almond flour. And I basically tested it with subjective and objective measurements. And what made you want to research this? Well, I'm very interested in food and nutrition. I am a dietetics major. And I think what often is overlooked is the importance of nutrition um, therapy and using nutrition as a way to help with diseases. So I wanted to look into that as opposed to maybe always using medication. Tell us a little bit about your project and what made you want to research it. Um, we both had a combined interest in adoption and the international process of it. And we both knew people who have been internationally adopted, so we thought it would be interesting to see how it affected them, their self-esteem, their self um identity and like how they felt about their own original culture and ethnicity. So we conducted five interviews with five different people who have been internationally adopted. And we found that four of the five participants were more interested in their American culture after they were adopted than their original culture from where they came from. We're here with Victoria and she's going to tell us a little bit about her research on that. So I uh, looked at white nose syndrome and the effects that it has on agriculture because of the decline of bats. So I compared crops. Um, of corn crops and um, agriculture to see if the decline of bats had an effect on corn. I did not find any significant decline in corn crops, but in the future I could check other crops to see if it had an impact. So what made you want to research bats? Um, I am a geography major. I'm really interested in wildlife. So I just, you know, was really interested in the decline of the bats and wanted to see, you know, what what it was all about, I guess. I did analysis of a 10th grade biology classroom. I gave the students a pretest, did the unit with alternative assessments, model building, inquiry based activities, and then took that same pretest and put it in their summative test and compared with the statistical analysis of their test scores in the pretest and summative test. So, what did you find from your research? Uh, from my research, I found that this unit was conducive to student learning and that the hands on inquiry based activities did promote learning in the classroom. What made you want to do research on this? Uh, I'm going to be a teacher hopefully in the future and I want to know that my lessons are a-okay. Great. So we went to Oregon to investigate a lava flow that has never been actually researched ever. Um, we used GIS to extract um, some morphometric data which is more or less just dimensions. So we're looking at length, width, thicknesses of these flows because since they've never been actually researched, we really don't know how big they are or what's there. Essentially, what can your research help us do in the future? Well, these types of maps, these digital elevation models, are currently being used to, to look at ocean depths. So we're looking at like abyssal plains using these types of maps, places we can't go to. So my research is called uh, uh, the Compilation Analysis of Heart Pedo Fauna Distribution and Habitat. And we're basically looking at salamanders within uh, the region of Honduras. And we have a lot of speculation about why they're uh, interested in locating in Honduras. Um, one of the reasons is we have junkies, which are called insects and species that are underneath of the soil. And so we're trying to figure out what's causing the salamanders to migrate to certain regions and to, to these areas within Honduras. Uh, we have two grad students that will be going down to Honduras this summer. So 
we don't really have a whole lot of information to go off of, but we're building the interface of the geo database, which consists of the species ID number, the countries, uh, a province within side of uh, Honduras, and uh, we're just building the, 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 the interface. And once we get out into the field, they'll be able to have their GPS units, and they'll be able to collect that information and then bring it back to uh, the software.